Alright you guys, so are you ready to finally start doing some trig? We've laid a lot of groundwork, we know what angles are, we know how to measure them, we know how to rotate them, how to form them, draw pictures of them, and all that good stuff. And so we're now ready to put this all together in official trig definition. Uh, the first thing I want to let you guys know, this is actually one of three. It turns out that there's actually several ways to define our trig functions. They're all interconnected, so uh, they're, uh, but um, this will be the first one. And I actually like to call it our x, y, r definition, because that's basically what this definition depends on, an x value, a y value, and an r value. So that's what I playfully call this first definition. Um, so let me go ahead and read it, show you the results, and then obviously I have to kind of explain it to you, right, and why that works. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to let x, y be a point on the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position. So to kind of help us go here, what I'm going to do, just go ahead and let's consider a situation, since we're used to working in that, let's say we're in quad one, right? And then obviously I'll show you how this still works in all the other quadrants. So what they're basically saying is I've got an angle in standard position, right? So again, that means it's initial side is along the x-axis. We go through some sort of rotation, right? So there's my theta, and my ray has moved up here now, right? And all we have is we've got some ordered pair. Let's put it right there, right? We have some x comma y that lies on the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position. So there's basically a picture of what that whole thing basically says. Uh, one thing I'll say before I move any further is that we are not talking about the origin, all right? So x and y cannot both be zero, right? One or the other could be zero, right? Uh, but they both can't be zero. So we're excluding the origin from this definition, all right? So x comma y cannot be zero, zero, okay? So with all that said, with that information, there's actually two things that are formed. First, that we can find the distance the point is, this is from the origin, by using this formula. All right, and again, I think we used to call the distance D, I'm now calling it R. Uh, that'll be clear why we're doing that, because there's actually some circles going on here, but I'm, I'm, I'm lo looking at another definition, all right? But we'll call it R, all right? And then, so the first thing is we have a distance the point is from the origin. And then the second thing is we actually have our definitions, all right? Uh, the sine of the angle that's given would be the y coordinate over that r. The cosine of that angle would be x over r. The tangent of that angle would be y over x. And then we have the reciprocals. The cosecant of that angle is r over y. The secant of that angle is r over x. And the cotangent of theta is x over y. And so these are definitions, all right? And so, uh, Obviously, I have a lot to explain, like what the heck's going on here. Bring this to my level. So let me go ahead and deal with the one that's easiest, the first, the distance uh, to the origin. So we already know from a previous work that the distance formula, right, is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? And so in this case, right, uh, one of my data points is 0, 0, right, because we're trying to find the distance from the uh, from the origin out to that point, right? That is basically where R is. How far is this from the origin? So one of my points is zero, zero, and the other point is this, uh, uh, any point I want it to be x, y. So if we plug the data in, this is what it becomes. It becomes x minus zero squared, y minus zero squared. And of course, if I subtract zero from anything, I just get the number. And so basically the distance is the square root of x squared plus y squared if my one of my points is the origin. So it just basically comes out to be the coordinate right of the point that I'm at. And of course we're no longer calling it d anymore. We are calling it r. So that is just a straight out application of the Pythagorean theorem. Believe it or not, which I'll show you in a moment, all right? And the uh, distance formula that we learned all right, earlier in another video. So we actually have that going on. Um, to even make the state further, let me go ahead and do that distance. So the distance formula is what I used here. But another thing that's going to help us out, so you'll really be convinced that everything is good here, is this ordered pair, conjunction with the initial side and the terminal side, if we would just take a line segment and make it parallel to the y-axis, 
what we've created is a right triangle right there. And in that right triangle, the side of the right triangle, that side would be the x distance, right? Essentially the x coordinate of that. And this side would be the y coordinate, basically how high I'm at. So that would be that. And of course, from the Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If I plug in what I have, right, um, um, a is x, b is y, and we're now calling c r squared. And if you take a square root of both sides, you have it yet again. That that distance is x squared plus y squared. So two ways to kind of think about that. We either use the distance formula like I did here to prove that r is x squared plus y squared, or you actually draw a representative right triangle, and the 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 sides of that representative right triangle are basically the x and the y coordinate of the ordered pair that lies on that terminal side. And then throwing it in the Pythagorean theorem, we have it yet again. So that's easy to prove, right, using some known things. This over here is brand new stuff, right? So how about I go ahead, I'm going to stop here. We're already six minutes into this. So I've covered one item, right? So when we have an xy coordinate pair on the, uh, uh, on the terminal side of an angle and standard position, we know that the distance from zero from the origin is given by this formula, r equals x squared plus y squared, right? That's important because you can see that, that r plays a role in these definitions. But let me go ahead and stop there, right? And I'll come back and give these their due as well, all right? So let me, uh, I'll see you in the next video.